Welcome back to DIY with KB. If you're new here, my name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. Now today, I'm giving you eight home decor items that need to go. You don't have to throw them in the trash, we care about the environment, but we're donating them, we're recycling them, we're giving them to our sister-in-law that we don't like. I don't care, they're getting out of our house. Before we get into today's video, please remember to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And if you want me to design your home, click the link in my description box for my virtual design sessions. And best believe, I'm leaving the best Funniest tip for last, so be sure to stay till the end of the video. Let's get into it. Now this next one is a direct attack on anyone who recently graduated from college, is still in college, or still thinks they're in college, but they're actually 40. So alcohol is not decor. Let's say it again, alcohol is not decor. So what do I mean by that? When you put alcohol up on your cabinets, that's not a cute look. So let's talk about what alcohol is. Alcohol is a beverage. If you're 21 plus, alcohol is a beverage. Alcohol is also a disinfectant. Very good. It is a disinfectant. But alcohol is not home decor. Alcohol has never been and will never be home decor. It just makes your space look cluttered. Unless you're buying the exact same alcohol every single time if you're just like married to a brand, like nobody wants to see a hundred bottles of Fireball. I'm sorry, the bright orange label just like kind of isn't it for anyone. Um, so there's really no way to make it look aesthetically pleasing. And I'm not just talking about liquor, I'm also talking about beer and I'm talking about wine. So wine is like, you know, you're like, oh, I'm part of the upper echelon, I drink wine. Well, let me just break it to you. Wine can also cost $5. So let's just break the stigma about that. But regardless, wine doesn't always look the most aesthetically pleasing. It's still bottled somewhere. And then you could have red mixed with white, mixed with whatever it is you drink, I guess, orange. They got orange now. Um, so it just isn't the most aesthetically pleasing. There's so many different colors. There's so many different heights. There's so many different labels. It's just ugly. It just really is ugly. But you're like, Kiva, I want some of my alcoholic beverages on display. What do I do about that? Well, what I'm gonna say is either get a closed bar cart and maybe have like your bar items on top, like your muddler, your shaker, get everything that's a uniform color or something like that that really ties in with the rest of your home and use that as a core and then keep all the alcoholic beverages stored down below where they're tucked away, no one can touch them, who doesn't need to be touching them and you don't have to worry about them all looking aesthetically pleasing together. Now, if you really, really want to put your stuff on display, then the alternative is to get a bar cart. Now, bar carts are super fun because they have them for almost every single style. They have brass ones, they have round ones, they have black ones, they have orange ones, they have green ones, it doesn't matter. Whatever style or color of bar cart you want, they have that. And what you can do with a bar cart is that there are spaces to put your alcohol, there's space to put your glasses, but there's also additional space to put some decor. So that's where you incorporate a floral arrangement or a few decorative accents. You can combine your alcohol and your alcohol materials with some decor so that it works a little bit better with your home. You're not just scanning the room and then you're like, wow, that person drinks a lot of alcohol and you keep going. It's able to be integrated a little bit more and it looks a lot more seamless. So that's a better way to deal with your alcohol. It's not home decor, but we can make it work with home decor. The next home decor item that needs to go is your collection. I'm sorry, I know that you spend a lot of time collecting whatever it is you collect, but chances are it does not go with your home decor. It's not because it's ugly, because not all collections are ugly. Um, it's not because of anything other than the fact that having a large number of something clutters a space, right? So most collectors, they like have hundreds or thousands of something. I don't know if you've ever seen a thousand Beanie Babies, but it quite literally has never looked cute. You know what I mean? So maybe if you collect art, Maybe that could look really good. Maybe if you collect vases, that could look very good. But even then, I feel like too much of something just clutters a space and it ruins it, right? If you have too much of something, then each one of those things kind of loses its significance and therefore it's not gonna pop. If you have 100 paintings on the wall, and I see that sitting in front of 10 paintings, um, if you have 100 paintings on the wall, then one is not going to be drawn to any one particular painting because they're kind of overwhelmed by the large number of things. So we're gonna take our collections and we're gonna move them elsewhere. So our collections are gonna go in our bedrooms or they're gonna go in our woman cave or our man cave or in our den or in our office. Our collections are not going to be located in central spaces in the home. 
That means that when people come over, you can have your decor, it can look really styled, but you're not gonna have that clutter that you get from your collections. Plus, then you don't have to have, worry about people having their grubby hands on your collections because you spend a lot of time curating them, and let's make sure that one of our Hot Wheels does not go missing. Now, if you're not open to that, what I want you to do is I want you to combine some of your collectibles with your home decor. Now, again, it really does depend on what you collect. Say you um, collect crystals or you collect um, snow globes. Maybe you could have your snow globes interspersed with a few books or with some decorative accents. Again, if you're collecting like McDonald's toys, I don't really know like how you're going to integrate that if you're over the age of seven. But um, there are ways to do it, so that's what I'm going to go encourage you to do instead. But honestly, I really want you to take those collectibles and just move them somewhere else because that's not it when it comes to making a luxurious looking home. Now this next item I think will offend the most number of people here today, so I do apologize in advance, but it needed to be said and I'm here to say it. Um, the plastic kitchen rugs need to go. I know you're like, Kiva, what about all the food I'm dropping on there? Kiva, like I need something on my toesies. I'm right there with you. We love a comfortable toesy. I'm there with you. I have a kitchen rug, but it's not a plastic kitchen rug. Problem for with the plastic rugs for me is that they're printed. They are not woven in any type of way. So the pattern is quite literally sitting on top a layer of plastic. It's like you literally went down there and drew it on yourself. I'm not saying they're ugly. I'm saying there is no dimension and it's very clear that it has just been printed on. Like you just put it in your printer at home and just kind of hope that it worked. So I don't want you to do that anymore. So if you need a kitchen rug, which most of us do, let's get a plain rug. Just because something is plain doesn't mean that it doesn't add to our decor. So in this case, what we're going going to do is we're going to get a rug that is a color that works with our color scheme. My kitchen is black, therefore my rug will be black. If my kitchen is white, my rug will not be white because that's impractical and when you drop a ton of food on there, I don't want you yelling at me about how you have to put your rug in the wash every single week. So maybe we'll incorporate the blue that we have across the room or the green or the gray or something like that. But if we're sticking to solid colors, we're not going to have these ugly plastic rug designs. Again, in high traffic areas, it doesn't make sense to invest in a rug but for your areas that no one's really sitting in the areas that you really want to look grand we want to invest in a rug we don't want to get a plastic printed rug because it just doesn't look very cute and if you really, really need a rug with pattern, another solution for you is to get a ruggable. So I've never personally owned a ruggable, but in my condo building, they had a ruggable and I was upset when they told me about it. I said, this is not gonna look good. It's gonna look horrible, but it does not. It actually has ample texture. I went down there and evaluated it for like 45 minutes, right? Cause that is my job as an interior designer. That's what they did. And it actually passed really well. So you could also get a ruggable if you really do want some pattern or texture to your thing. It has a little bit more dimension than the printable rugs. It is more expensive but it might be worth that to you now this is another item that I wish that I didn't have to say but folding chairs are not home decor folding chairs are not furniture folding chairs need to go if you are at a cookout a folding chair is good if you were at your son or daughter's soccer game, the folding chair is okay. If you just moved in college, the folding chair is okay. Now, I don't think while you're still in college, the folding chair is okay, but that is controversial. Regardless, folding chairs are not okay. They are metal, they stick out like a sore thumb, and honestly, at the end of the day, they're very uncomfortable, so I don't really understand why you would want to use that as opposed to any other form of decor or furniture. What I will also say is that these chairs, it doesn't matter how many times you try to reupholster the seat, uh, it doesn't matter if you put plaid on there or rainbow or a really nice fabric. I still can see the metal outline and all the screws and I remember that from my assembly in middle school and I just like don't like that for me. Um, they're never going to be comfortable. They're never going to be aesthetically pleasing. I don't even have a solution for you for this one besides just like get rid of it. And at the end of the day, these chairs actually can be fairly expensive. So instead of buying chairs like this, maybe you can invest in a chair that is fabric based or um, leather or faux leather. It can be similar in price, but it could be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. I believe that you should live within your means because that is the most important thing, your comfort. So in, if you're spending $20 on this chair or $20 on a faux leather chair, let's just get the faux leather chair instead. It's gonna look better. Um, it's probably gonna be more comfortable and you're still spending the exact same amount of money. Now, I have a very serious bone to pick with this lamp. This lamp needs to go. Now, I don't know why this lamp was so popular for so many years. You saw it at Target, Walmart, Ikea, 
you are actually seeing it in some nicer catalogs. I really don't understand what's happening, but this lamp needs to go. So not only is it rainbow, um, which is problematic, not because I don't like rainbow things. Rainbows are great, but rainbows don't really work with most color palettes unless your color palette is in fact rainbow. Um, but I also dislike this lamp because it's very tall and it kind of has like a Medusa thing going on. So it really messes up the sight line. If you see this lamp, you're not gonna see anything behind it or anything in front of it, anything to either side of it either. So you can't see past it. So it's really nice that it provides light, but like it doesn't provide me with access to the rest of my own home, which is problematic for me. I will also say that these lamps are fairly expensive for what they are. You can still get a single like dome lamp or just like a basic lamp for the same price at the same stores. So I'd probably opt with that instead. And now on a less serious note, I really don't like these lamps because in the middle of the night they look kind of scary because they have too much going on. Like we don't want the monster vibes in our house. We kind of just want like that good energy. Let's keep it. And that lamp does not bring that for me and you know comfort is important to me um and last but not least these shades also just like don't add that much light to the room and if you're buying a light the chances are you kind of want it to produce light um so we want to get something that's actually going to provide that to you so again i don't want you to put yourself out financially trying to invest in a lamp because they can be exam expensive go to the same store and you can find something comparable in terms of price um, but just has a little bit less going on because we want to keep our sight lines clear we don't want to be scared in the middle of the night and we want to make sure that we have a very good color palette in our home the next item that needs to go is travel artwork now you're saying kiva what does that mean so let me break it down for you we live in the era of digital prints and i love digital prints i live for digital prints these are all digital prints it allows me to learn of artists and support artists that I otherwise would not have known about or I otherwise would not have been able to afford because painting is expensive. All the fees that they charge are 100% worth it. But if you're not in that part of your life where you can invest in that, this is the only way to get original art. Now with these digital prints, they've also become mass made prints of things that just don't really make any sense. So let me give you an example. So in every glam girl's house, there is a picture of the Eiffel Tower. Now, there is nothing wrong with the Eiffel Tower. It is a very incredible landmark. It is very beautiful. And I would argue that it is beautiful in person. I would argue that it is beautiful in a picture, but a drawing of the Eiffel Tower, I just like don't really understand the point. Unless it has significant meaning to you, why do you have a picture of that? It's not really telling me anything about yourself. Art is such a great opportunity for expression and that doesn't tell me anything. Just like those um, paintings that also just say NYC on them. I know how to spell NYC, it's NYC. Why did you make that? Instead of having these things of landmarks, words, or just like loose drawings of them, if these paces are special to you, let's take pictures while we're there and frame them. Put them in a cool frame, that's all you have to do. Um, you know, get a nice painting of that place, get a digital print of that place instead of just getting a line drawing of the Eiffel Tower. You know, let's put up art that is representative of us and our experiences. If you have a friend that is an artist, put her art up. That will just speak a little bit more to you and it will make your walls look more exciting. Again, I really do have qualms with mass produced art because 10 out of 10 times, it's actually not supporting the artist in the way that you wish that it was. And then everyone's house looks exactly the same. And that's exactly what happens with travel art. Now, instead, I would much rather you have maybe a landscape that has the Eiffel Tower in it or a landscape that has the Great Barrier Reef in it. There's nothing wrong with enjoying those things, but just like don't get the same thing that everything else, everyone else has and stop buying art that has words in it. Art does not have words in it. It just doesn't have words in it. So let's just get art that is actually art let's not get art that's writing that we're calling art the next ugly home decor item that needs to go is faux greenery so hear me out don't don't click off yet hear me out i'm not talking about that faux greenery that looks real that definitely exists i'm right there with you I'm talking about that faux greenery that isn't green. It's not really faux greenery. I think it's just like sticks. There are tons of faux pieces of greenery and flowers and those decorative accents that just don't look real at all. Like if you haven't seen something in nature, like not even in your area, if you haven't seen it in your area, if you haven't seen it on the nature channel, chances are that does not exist in nature, right? And if we're bringing faux greenery or faux florals into the home, we want it to actually look like something else that really exists, right? 
right? So instead of buying those bamboo poles or just like those florals that you find in Ross that you're like, I don't even know like if they got this from outside or were inspired by outside, let's get some real flor florals and intersperse them with faux ones. So in my opinion, the best faux plants are faux plants of plants that are tropical plants or exist really well in um, more harsh environments or in warmer environments. So like a faux aloe vera plant just tends to look better than like a faux fiddle leaf fig plant to me or at least like a cheap one. I think it's way easier for them to pull it off just because of how they actually have to create that faux looking piece of something. Because when something has a ton of leaves, you tend to see like that white backing on it that can be really distracting and really draws attention to the fact that that leaf is not real. But when you're dealing with more waxy plants like aloe vera or succulents, it's really hard to tell actually whether or not they're real or fake unless they've just got a sheet of fake pebbles there in which case it's, it's pretty clear that it's not real. So I would say lean to those type of faux plants and then supplement with some real greenery. Now I'm not saying that you have to have a green thrum, research plants and figure out which ones don't require that much attention and incorporate those in your home. The next home decor item that needs to go is the candy buffet jar. I know, I know, I know, I know. If you love glam and if you love farmhouse, this is gonna hit a nerve. It's gonna hit a nerve. Now, there isn't anything inherently wrong with these jars. They're actually really nice jars. I think that they look really cute, but obviously they're clear, right? So if you don't fill them up properly, it looks just kind of silly. Um, because what happens is, is people will put these like big like wooden and moss orbs in there and you're like, cool, but because of the weird shape of the container, they only really put two in there and there's just like a ton of empty space and you're kind of like, did you want to fill it up? Did you not want to fill it up? Like, what were you going for here? I just think the jars are a really odd shape and therefore it's really hard to be successful with this piece of decor. So I like the shape. There's nothing wrong with it. So there are two solutions here. Either use those jars for candy, go full on Khloe Kardashian and arrange your Oreos in there, put your jelly beans in there, let everybody know that you are stocked when they come over and you'll be everyone's favorite home, or instead of getting these clear jars, you can get these jars that actually have some color in them so that they can be white or black or gold or something like that and they're not see-through so that you don't have to fill them properly. The shape of the containers can kind of be the decor and the color that they come with. It doesn't have to be the contents. Not only is it hard to fill them up, but the contents can just get super busy, you know what I mean? And last but not least, what I will say, instead of buying five of them, maybe just like buy two or three because they create a lot of color and they actually tend to be fairly tall, so you can't see over them. So if you've created this beautiful buffet behind these candy jars, I can't even see it. So I don't want you to waste your time on creating that amazing tablescape. I do want to see it, so we have to move these things to the side and not make them so front and center so all of your other design efforts can shine. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. I gave you eight ugly home decor items that definitely need to go. And don't worry, I didn't leave you hanging like last time. I gave you solutions. My channel is all about aspirational interior design. Now our houses are not gonna look like luxury $75 million mansions overnight. I want you to live within your means, but hopefully I'm able to give you some tips that take your home to the very next level. Let me know down below which of these mistakes you have made. I'll admit it, I had that light for way longer than I should have. Thank you so much for watching today's video and until next time, have a beautiful day.